The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Mario McElroy. I'm your <laughs> sweet baby brother, Crash Griffin McElroy Bandicoot. It's time to power up! Yeah. That's uh, the stinger that I produced. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, yeah. I, do you want to hear it again? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bu- Click play on it because I know you pre recorded it sure. and play it again. Yeah. It's time to power up! That was really uh, good, Justin. Yeah, we're getting pumped for uh, the triple, Electronic 3. We are uh, psyched out of our minds, not going. <laughs> so, <laughs> so stoked for well, it Well, you can take the boy out of the games industry, but you can't take the games out of the boy, because I swallowed like 14 Nintendo DS cartridges back in 2009 and hadn't seen them yet. I swallowed a lot of those Switch cartridges. They tasted bad, but I couldn't help it. Yeah, you get them down fast enough. You don't get the taste in your mouth. Nice try, though, Reggie. Can I tell you guys what I'm really excited about at E3? Uh, Tell me what it is. Justin has reminded me of it. Or I sorry, it was Griffin. I can't wait for that new Crash Bandicoot game starring Randy Bandicoot. Yeah, we all love Randy Bandicoot. He's the nasty Crash Bandicoot who yes. cusses and... Finally, an NC-17 Crash Bandicoot game. And with Randy, you get all the jeans. He doesn't cut them off at the calf. He yeah. goes full ankle jeans, and he cusses and has a gun. So we're all... I'm looking forward to that. We all love Randy Coot. I'm going to say this, and I'm not sure that I'm correct. I believe Randy Bandicoot is owned by Nintendo, so that's probably going to be the big Nintendo installation this year. I think 2016, it was Zelda. 2017, it was Mario. 2018, Randy Bandicoot. Randy Bandicoot, love it. There's new Mario everybody's looking forward to. This time, it's sort of more serious, and he's older in this one. He's like 70. Mm Mm-hmm. So old Mario's coming out. And then this one, I think he's got a grandson, and he's teaching his grandson about like how Fist toxic fighting. masculinity is bad, and he's like, oh. you gotta use your you use your rage to fight, but you use your heart to temper it. What are you looking forward to, Justin? The Master Chef, that's right, Gordon Ramsay is back in Halo. And it's just <laughs> called that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and that's and all we like, know so far, but we can speculate about what's going to happen in the it, game. It, yeah, it's almost like the developers of Halo panicked because they couldn't think of a funny joke fast enough. And so they just sort of said the first thing that came to their mind. Well, now, even why though would it, they be trying to come up with a joke, Griffin? That doesn't make sense. PlayStation 5. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've another. been out. I've been out of the loop a little bit. Is PlayStation Five yeah. going to be a sort of going concern at the big day? <laughs> I'm looking forward to Xbox XXT. I'm looking forward to Ubisoft press conference. Tony Hawk is supposed to come out and just apologize to everyone, <laughs> and that's something I've been looking for. I mean, I need that to move on. And now, so- Griffin, you, uh, you, or you said you were worried about excluding people. So if you don't follow video games. Very closely. Um, you may not have gotten that. So I was hoping you could take a few minutes to just explain why that last joke was funny. Sure. So uh, here's what happened. Nintendo Press Conference 2013. Nintendo came out and they're like, here's our new system. Everybody's going to love it. It's got it all. Uh, Mario, Zelda, the uh, Eternal Darkness 2, all the games you've been looking forward to. And this is the, just the prototype is the only one that we've got, but it does a billion pixel graphics and is free. And everybody's and Tony Hawk doing his dumb shit, kickflips up onto the stage, knocks it over and breaks it. So none of us got it. And instead, we got the Wii U, a real bastard of a video mm. game product. Ugh. And uh, so he feels re- he's felt really bad about that for a long time. 
I will also say, so as not to exclude people, if you are going to E3 and you don't care about video games, um, please, 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 please get some chicken tendos. Got Let to. me know how they are, because um, I'm not going to be able to make it this year. Um, and chicken tendos are my favorite part of E3. So if anybody's going to be there, feel free to tweet pictures to me of your chicken tendos. Get them. Let me know how they are. If you see Big the Cat, Please mm. ask him to be a guest on My Brother, My Brother and Me. Got to. Yes. We would love to have him. Never had a cat. I'm excited and... for, uh, I think, I heard some scuttlebutt this year. Nintendo's got a big announcement. They're okay. finally ready to release the game man. Yes. <laughs> he's all grown he's up all and he's grown ready up. to fuck. <laughs> Tetris, I mean. That's right. Fuck Tetris is the first game announced for the game man. It takes eight very horny AAA batteries. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very sexual, flesh-colored AAA batteries. It takes 16 of them. Every time you clear a line and you slot that last little uh, tetromino into the hole in such a pleasing way, there's just a dude. And he comes in through the bad game man speakers, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, yeah! So don't play this one at church, kids. Wait, no, but- Scott, you like, did you like when the Game Boy was... Black and white. Well, this the game man's got a new color and it's jizz. Wow. <laughs> oh no! That n- now that word's just there, Justin. Oh no! <laughs> I did, I didn't say it. Shigeru Miyamoto said it in his original design document for sure. the game man, recently unearthed by the Library of Congress, and some r- r- rogue game developers just made the game man without Nintendo's express written permission. It's now, an unlicensed sequel. <laughs> This is the problem I have with the game, man, is that I don't mind um, all the updates they've made to the graphics cards and the sound cards and all the new game. That's all great. Why do they have to give the game, man, realistic, muscly arms? I find yeah. it off-putting. Um, yeah. And they're fully, artic- like, they move on their own. Yeah. I do not care for I, it. And it's I got, got knuckle home. tattoos that say ready to jerk it, and they gave it extra yeah. fingers so it would have room for all those letters. I got home from uh, work the other day, and my game man that Nintendo sent me early, uh, I came home. He was just grilling up some steaks out on the back porch, and I was like, <laughs> that's not safe. And he said, he said, cram it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then he kicked my ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Griffin. I said I said, Game Man, what kind of beer do you want? And he said, Bad. And I said, yeah. Can you be more specific? He wants a bad said, beer? He said, here. So that's all he cared about. He doesn't have a palate for a great beer. He just wants to guzzle down whatever's around. He oh, made no. me do sixty push ups in front of my wife, the game man. <laughs> I don't care for it. You know, I'm willing to review it now. I'll say, uh, listen, maybe they'll do some updates that will make him not so angry. And I do look forward to that. But like, come on, Nintendo. Yeah. He pushed me into an umbrella stand and said he fixed my car. Yeah. But here's the thing, guys. It wasn't broken. And I would uh-huh. say a stack of Bibles. It wasn't broken. So I don't know what exactly he did. Now, I will say this about the game man is that. I'll, I will love this 40 pound mobile game console that kicks my ass and makes me do push ups in front of my wife if they just put Animal Crossing on it. I'll do that for you. It's the thing about the game man is he doesn't have a screen. So he's just telling you what your character is doing in yeah. Animal Crossing. And you make, you can make requests. You know, it almost seems like Nintendo has just hired a fleet of men to come to my house and yell at me. And yeah. I don't, they don't, they don't come with games and I, they don't even seem to, they seem to just be human men who Nintendo has sent to bully me. I don't understand this. What is this business plan, Nintendo? I wish I could tell you, Chad, but I uh, was left in disgrace from the games industry. So, mm-hmm. you know, what's you know, what's so powerful about my brother, my brother and me, we can all agree that the games man segment was excellent and good. Uh, and in a traditional writer's room, what they would probably do is say, what's funny about E3, keep throwing things out, and then eventually hit upon the game man, and then put that into the show that they're doing. Uh huh. But what's so powerful about my brother, my brother, and me is we're going to use 
all of it. We're going to yeah. harness yeah. all the things we said before when we were trying to find something funny, and that will still be there for you. You could see the roadmap, you know, because you, you see some of this stuff on TV and you think, how are they coming up with it? And on my brother, my brother, me, we have the courage to say, here's how. Guessing yeah. until we get lucky. Just kind mm-hmm. of closing our eyes in. and spinning around a lot and pointing at something. Yeah. Knocking down all the vases in the room until we find one that's full of rubber chickens. Yeah. That's How about comedy. a regular question, though? How do I convince my boyfriend to wear shorts more often? He's got the legs and ass of a Greek god, and the world needs to know. He's not self-conscious about his body. He just likes blue jeans. And that's from Gam Loving Girlfriend. What a frustration to keep those beautiful pipes under denim wrap. Yeah, yeah. if only there was some way that he could wear jeans and shorts at the same time. No, it's not that, Trav. You don't understand. Sometimes, I, I'm at home right now. I've been working from home all day. I could have changed into shorts at any point, but I'm wearing these denim buttes because it's for me. Um, now, there is another compromise here, and that's that you got to get those... That George Michael jeans, where it's Ooh, just you yes. can you can see it all the definition of each nut. It's just right there for you. The world's the world is yours. Do you mean Griffin because the jeans be so tight, or because they be so like ripped up? Um, I think both is good. I think if you can get the rips mostly in the calf zone so that people can see like a neat sort of striation effect uh, uh-huh. as if to show how old your jeans are, that could be really good. But otherwise, you just want these puppies as tight as possible. Uh, gripping, gripping, always gripping. Well, you can also get some sliced up jeans in like the butt region, you know, so it's like, sure. ooh, is there a butt in there? Yes, there yeah, is. There is. There is. That's confirmed. You know, maybe he's just trying to break in a new pair of shrink to fits, and you gotta wear those. Jesse Thorne says you have to wear them for 17 years. You put your baby in a pair of tiny shrink to fit jeans, and then you don't let them escape until they graduate high school. And what? That's true because they grow with you. They form. Jesse to Thorne your body. says that. That's what Jesse Thorne says, and Jesse Thorne says that on the graduation day. That the they can emerge from their old dirty jeans like a chrysalis, but until then they must must grow in the same pair of jeans, same pair of shrink to fits. So if your boyfriend is breaking in a pair of shrink to fits, that that is an investment that you may not appreciate now, but much like the hen saving corn as the grasshopper played in the field, once the fall comes what? around. You will be so excited about <laughs> these great jeans and the investment that he put into them. So at the end of that parable, Justin, is the grasshopper come around like, hey, I want to eat some corn? I'm a I grasshopper? Guess. Hey, I know I'm the world's first corn-eating grasshopper, so really the world shouldn't be surprised that I didn't save any corn because who knew? But who I knew? saw your <laughs> corn and I was like, fuck, that looks good. It's, um, <sighs> it is the it's. I know it's about a hen. <laughs> There's a hen in there somewhere. There's a hen in there somewhere. She asks a bunch of uh-huh. things to help her plant the corn, and they say maybe it's just a bunch of different animals, none of which are grasshoppers. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's it's possible. That one of, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. And all of them are wearing some really tight, sexy ass jeans. Yeah, for sure. How about a yeah. Yahoo? Mm, yeah this one was sent in by fizz thanks fizz it's uh anonymous yahoo answers user so i'm a calm i think this is the papa john guy in this advertisement says no it's the coach of some sort of sports team but he sure as hell looks like the papa john's man anyway papa john asks can the Cavs theoretically sign me to a 15 day contract if i could win them the championship against golden state how much maximum would I be able to earn in 15 days if I can win the title for the Cavs with my sidekick, LeBron? Okay. This is an interesting question. I don't know anything about basketball contracts or the sport at large. But would it be possible if I put up like my highlight reel of dunking in, uh, you know, th- sick threes and then somebody at the Cleveland Cavaliers sees it and mm-hmm. says, 
this these are two factors these are two things uh, that we are deficient in is dunks and threes Mm -hmm. and then sign me for two weeks and change to get in there just as long as they're playing the golden state warriors and i can get in there and win and then the contract's over and i'm free well griffin i i think so because i remember not too long ago i think it was uh, about two months ago when you injured your knees in that freak accident and then they healed in such a way that you could dunk like like a dunking machine yeah and, but- and so i could see that happening as like you know maybe just one day you're at a Cavs game and like somebody like drops their popcorn but whoa you jump and you grab it, and they're like, yeah, because my, cool, my flubber niece, and thank you for yeah. bringing that up, Trav. But definitely haven't brought that up before because I wasn't trying to keep it private or anything. But yeah, let's, oh, I guess, I'm let's sorry. talk about it. Yeah, I got hit by two different cars at the same time, you one for each knee. So thanks, Trav. Well, edit it back so it sounds like I'm talking about someone else. Probably wondering how that happened. It was during a drag race, of course. Thank you, Travis. I'm sorry. Travis Griffin. was alluding to the hit teen comedy Rookie of the Year. Oh, was I? Uh, funky Butt Loving. When he, um, uh, Injure, the kid injures his arm in such a way that makes him great at pitching. That's, uh, of course, possible um, and ludicrous at the same time. But uh, they never explore the extension of that reality in that fiction that I, I want to see the like pro baseball players lining up to attempt to give themselves the same injury that this child withstood. Yeah. Uh, like, like purposely like going into the doctor and having them like, jam various uh shivs and what have you into their musculature to try to reenact this terrible accident that would be ghoulish but i i think it'd be worth it for the blu-ray also could we could we just for a little bit i would like one scene edited in for like the the 25th anniversary blu-ray edition of rookie of the year that's just like major league baseball's lawyers being like well this child is 15 so we probably can't legally work for us right there's laws against this is there not i want the scene where the kid's arm heals and he's like oh man i really liked having that cool pitching arm i wonder what other parts of my body i can sort of modify like that Mm -hmm. and he just whams himself right in the goners with a big (laughs) meat tenderizer just thinking like maybe more powerful balls i guess (laughs) (laughs) no that that one didn't work hey mom hospital again hospital (laughs) call an uber (laughs) what do you think he, Rowan Gardner, goes on, yeah, what's up? That was a deep pull. Goes on to, like, what's he do after that? He, you know, he lands again. He does an underhanded pitch in the MLB. And he wins the big game. Spoiler alert for Rookie of the Year. What does he do with the rest of his life? Let's write some fan fiction. Probably tours around malls, right? He signs things in malls. Or goes from school to school showing kids that drugs are bad by throwing a baseball weird and fast. Yeah, drugs are bad, but it's okay to like <laughs> injure yourself to be better at sports. Oh, I have breaking news. The The film of Rookie of the Year is based on a 1954 American comedy, the name of which is Rookie's Bump. <laughs> What? Sorry, Justin. Neither of the words you just said were words. Can you take another swing at it? Rookies bump. It still says like it sounds like you're saying rookie, like noogie, it's, but with an R. My friends, the film is called Rookies Bump. <laughs> Rookies <laughs> bump. The, according to the poster, Rookie is the miracle kid with the super zoom ball. It uh-huh. is the name of the film is Rookies Bump. It is Rookie. It's Rookie. Rookie, not rookie, rookie, and rookie. I don't know why. And this is this is the kid with the super zoom ball, right? This is the uh-huh. one with the super zoom ball. They uh, call the, him rookie. <laughs> on the poster, does it say written by cocaine? <laughs> What is a young boy who loves baseball develops a strange bump on his arm? Wait, <laughs> Ruggy. <laughs> Ruggie's got a strange bump on his arm and it gives him the super zoom ball. The bump has such an effect on his pitching arm that he soon finds himself playing for a major league baseball team. As stupid as the, um, as stupid as the he fell and broke his arm and the tendons rehealed too tight is, it's got to be better than my, my tumor that makes me good at pitching. Like a strange bump. My now, strange bump. 
One question. Rookie's bump, I call it. That's yeah. right, Rookie. Oh my God, it's talking. That was my question. It definitely talks, right? And was voiced Had by like Jimmy talk. Stewart or something. Had to talk. I, I'm looking at one of the variations of the poster for it, and it's Rookie's bump featuring the Brooklyn Dodgers. So that's wow, a pretty that's cool a- year for the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> And a good year for the movie when you have to advertise the fact that you tricked a baseball team to being in it. That's that was the part. that was the least we've ever answered a question. Let's move on. I can't stop thinking about the phrase Ruggie's, Ruggie's bump. bump. Ruggie's Bump is my movie. I'm sorry, sir, but the outlook doesn't look good. It seems that you have Ruggie's Bump. Not Ruggie's Bump. How long do I have? Like three weeks, but they're going to be three really fun major league weeks. <laughs> I want to do a sequel to Ruggie's Bump, and it's you, it's the same thing, but the kid hates baseball, and he doesn't <laughs> want to. I don't want to do that, Doctor. Well, could you, you just, just cure my strange bump? Can you just cure my strange bump. I my, couldn't destroy t- a beautiful bump like that. <laughs> none of my t-shirts fit. I'm a junior in college, living in a student apartment complex. One of my roommates asked me to watch his plants for him while he's in Europe for the summer, and I said yes. So now I'm alone in my apartment, babysitting an ironing board covered in plants. My question is this. My plant-owning roommate left a gallon of jug of artisanal water from some fancy well next to the plants. Oh, God. It looks expensive, and it's almost empty. Do I have to buy more expensive artisanal water? Can I just water them with tap water? Will the plants tell on me? And that's from Confused Plant Sitter in Colorado. I mean, they'll tell on you by dying because they're not getting their special water. Their special water. Their mag- Their secret stuff. Their secret plant stuff. It is Michael Jordan's sweat, definitely. That's what they drank in Space Jam, right? I haven't seen it in a long time. When they say Michael's (laughs) secret stuff, they're talking about his... Michael's piss. His fluids. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, no, Daffy Duck spraying happily Michael MJ's piss. Thank you, Travis, for thinking of uh, Porky Pig and all of his friends just spraying MJ's piss right into the gob to be good at basketball. What's up with that Space Jam 2? Yeah, Wait, come where's on. that? Water has the following in it. A little bit of hydrogen, twice as much oxygen, or perhaps flip that. Is I don't think there's anything else in this stuff, right? Like, the water that comes off the most beautiful glacier and the stuff that comes out of my, you know, my street tap is just water, right? It's the same chemicals, so who cares, man? Well, the plants care because they need their special... yeah. Minerals. You know? They're special minerals. Special minerals. They need them minerals. What kinds of things do plants need? Let's just go back and forth uh, listing some of the most important things that plants need in their water. Trav? Compassion. Kisses? Okay. Plants need kisses, he says. Yeah. And they need money. Plants need your money. I mean, for me, it's always been water, sunshine, and for bees to have sex on them. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that's about? Yep, is that yep, yep. why we're so concerned about the bees? Yep. yep, we need them to get nasty in all our beautiful plants or else all the corn and blueberries are donezo. I don't understand giving plants more than they need to live. I don't believe that there's certain waters that's better for plants because they're getting the dirty water from the sky, right? Like m- many plants are doing just fine with our shitty dirty water. Yeah. So why do they need special? I don't believe that these plants need special water. How do you even know how much? I bought my wife a plant for Mother's Day, and then I hung it outside, and then I gave it various amounts of water, just hoping that I would stumble on the right combination that would keep it alive. Um, I was not successful. But how do you even know how much water to give the things? I do also, I love J-Man because I feel the same way that if I have a plant in my house, it is not about I hope I can help this plant flourish, but Mm -hmm. rather I just hope I can beat the clock on plant death. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. not trying to have the world's best fern. I merely want it to last longer than six months, and that's a big old W for me. That's why I like pro flowers. That ship has sailed. It's not about keep this alive. It's like preserve this corpse. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no pressure there. I'm a I'm a I'm a, a mortuary, not a hospital. <laughs> and also, what do you do if you have to iron clothes? Oh my shit, Justin, yeah, you're right. You didn't even think about that. Yeah, can't possibly move these precious spoiled plants. <laughs> these pampered plants. Maybe that's it. Maybe you need to toughen these plants up and take them on like a survival weekend. Take the plants on a road trip. You and your friend Jack Black in the front seat. These plants in the back seat. A wild 
sort of road trip. Yeah, you're trying to keep these plants alive, but have they ever really lived? Yeah, and they're going to be uncomfortable about it at first. They're going to be like, ugh, are you sure about this? And then some bees are going to start having sex on them, and they're like, well, this is how it's supposed to be. And then it turns out, oh no, it's weed, and you've been pulled over. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Is it has it been weed the whole time? I think it's been... Oh, no, oh, it's been weed the minute. whole time. Have the plants been weed the whole time? Because your friend is no friend of yours. It's a friend of Cheech Marin. That's <laughs> what I talk about with stoners. I was playing some Destiny earlier today. I was playing with some randos online. Gang, I heard somebody take the longest bong rip I ever heard. I thought they were pulling a prank on me. It was literally pro- a good probably 45 seconds. Not a joke, not an exaggeration. A good like, hey, hold on, everybody. Don't start it up yet. Go ahead and uh, kill all the stuff in the room. And I'll be ready for the boss. Here we go. <gasps> Like 45 seconds. I felt like I was like going up a hill on a roller coaster made of a bong. That was nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I was sitting here trying to formulate a rookie of the year version joke of like, maybe this person had asthma, damaged their lungs, and now they're able to take these ridiculous rips. But I couldn't get there. (laughs) The doctor said the only treatment for my rookie's bump (laughs) is giant, (laughs) giant bong rips. It's just juicy ribs. Hey, I got a quick Yahoo here. This one was sent in by Erica Batty. Thank you, Erica. It's Yahoo Answers user question mark who asks, if you die hungry, is -hmm. your ghost hungry forever? Please don't answer this with ghosts aren't real. I know there's no physical proof, but I'm erring on the side of caution. Always so smart when you're talking about the supernatural. You're... Driving down the road, heading to Hardy's, and you've got a hearty hunger and you growing in your belly, and you got to get there soon uh, because you're you're not you when you're hungry, and you uh, do a quick like cool hairpin turn into the you know the Hardy's drive through, and you flip a car explode, yeah, and you've died hungry, and there's your ghost. It can never enter the Hardy's, and even if it could, and couldn't eat the tangible burgers, is your ghost hungry forever? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and mention that in the Hello from the Magic Tavern, uh, they do discuss the hunger ghost, so it's okay. You don't need to tweet at us about that. You have a ghost. It's never sated, right? Uh-huh, yes. We have a finite number of resources on this planet, a finite amount of resources on this planet. This ghost could eat their way through our food supply mm-hmm. and really put our whole ecosystem in something of a bind because the ghost could just single-handedly eat up all our dang hot dogs and all all of our good stuff. The ghost could just chomp it all down. Now, here's my question, J-Man. When I eat a sandwich, does that create a ghost sandwich? We've definitely talked about this before. Okay. <laughs> what does that say about us? I know, it's a bummer. Um, I mean, What does that ha- say about us? No, it's rough. But listen, does this carry over to all known desires? If I really want to listen to Dave Matthews' band, but first I'm going to use the toilet and I definitely die on it, then am I always going to be floating around spectral world just like, damn, I'd love to hear Ants Marching right now, but my wife is too sad to turn on his feel-good tunes. <laughs> what is, I think that the worst like sensation to die with and have forever is being afraid, like if you die of fright, and then you're just a scared ghost forever, because mm. like, what are you going to do yeah. as a ghost to not be scared? Maybe sleepy. Sleepy's also bad. Sleepy then, ghost would be all right, because what else are you going to do? That's fair. What right? do I have to, have to go to the bathroom ghost? That's no good, because you, then you have to, you can never, see, yours is so bad. Mine was pretty good. If you're a sleepy ghost, then it's like, well, I'm in this big spooky mansion. I don't, I've read all the books by floating through them, as I do, and I don't have anything to do, but I'm always really sleepy, so I'm just going to sack out for a few hundred years. <laughs> Maybe some neighborhood kids will wander in here. I'll give them a little spookaroo. Get out and turn the light off on your way. Please. Maybe, maybe crank down that AC a couple degrees and turn on the fan in the bedroom. <laughs> give me some white noise. <laughs> <laughs> the horny? <laughs> I feel like I feel like horny ghost is a phrase my mouth has said before, and I can't oh, hear no. a reason Should we, it would happen other than this show. Should we put an embargo on ghost jokes, then? We Maybe might we need a moratorium. Ghosts, <gasps> All right. Will. So now that we know that this is the last ghost bit, let's talk about some of our favorite ghostly memories uh, here on My Brother, My Brother, Me, some of our favorite ghost humor we've ever done. Um, 
I wow, I can't think of one good one. So maybe let's go the money zone. <laughs> Our first sponsor this week is Bowl and Branch. Don't you get excited when you know you get to slip in to your spectral sheets and give yourself a nice ghostly nap? If you're gonna, if you're a ghost that's gonna sleep for a hundred years, you should do it on the best sheets available from Bowl and Branch, and uh, they're they're made from pure one hundred percent organic cotton. They start out super soft, and you know where they go from there? Did you guess less soft? You're incorrect because they get softer over time. Lots of great reviews. Shipping is free. You could try them for 30 nights, and if you don't love them, send them back for a refund. I also want to say, not just sheets. I've got a set of towels from Bowling Branch. Oh, that, yeah. I, and I've had them now for like, uh, you know, uh, almost a year, maybe over a year. And unlike some towels I've had, the more I wash them, like they stay consistently that like soft, fluffy, new towel kind of feeling. Love that. Need love that, these man. towels. Uh, you're going to get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlingbranch.com. Promo code my brother. So go to bowlingbranch.com today for $50 off your first set of sheets. That's B O L L and branch.com. Promo code my brother. Hey, Stitch Fix. Well, how's, yeah? it going? how's it going, pal? I, I'm going to talk about you for a minute. Hey, Stitch okay. Fix, though. Just thanks. Um, kind of don't love you being here in the room while I do it. I kind of need my space. <laughs> no, go to... ahead. I like to watch. Oh, no. Here's <laughs> here's your $200. Go yeah. ahead. Thanks. Talk about the service. <clears throat> All right. Uh, they send you a... Let, just let me know if I get Slower. Goofy. All right. Um, so just because a sense of style can be elusive for some doesn't mean it's impossible to attain. Discover the style you never knew you had with a little help from Stitch. Sorry, can you put your shirt back on? <laughs> just, yeah, but I just got five new ones in a box from myself. <laughs> you... So I'm going to change into one of these new looks and I'd like you to give me your feedback. All right, go ahead. Yeah, they're all really good. I mean, you so bought them for yeah. yourself, so it's not like... Well, I didn't, actually. I had one of the people that work inside of me choose them. Uh, oh. They got my favorite... I told them my favorite styles yeah. and my budget, and they selected five brand new clothing. I guess, yeah. Just for me. No, I can yeah. see them rattling around inside of you whenever you move. You're huge, by the way. Um, so anyway, what you do is you answer some questions about your sizes, favorite styles and budget, and your personal stylist will hand select five new, uh, brand new clothing items just for you. You send back anything you don't want and shipping's free both ways. So you only pay what you, for, for what you keep. My size is extra. What's that? Extra. You you just are extra? Yes. Extra me. Okay. So you can get your fix whenever you want, regardless of which size you wear, even if that size is company or you can sign up to receive scheduled shipments hurry to stitchfix.com slash my brother to get started now keep all five items you receive and you'll get 25 percent off your entire purchase go to stitchfix.com what? what i didn't approve that oh, that's no. just too great of a deal i'm gonna go broke with that kind of a deal well you want me to holler around inside of you and see if i can find the culprit yes look check Check my armpit for Jerry. He's a new guy, and I think he's the kind of nincompoop that would have a, a dumb idea like going to stitchfix.com slash my brother and keep 25% off when you keep all five items. That sounds like a Jerry original. Okay. Trav, you want to read this next message? I sure do, Griffin. Thank you for asking. Are you getting married and you want a beautiful memory to last a lifetime? Sure. Find a woman that can satisfy uh, me. Stitch Fix. Oh, goodness. Oh, <laughs> I seen, thought he'd be gone. Hey, Stitch Fix. Hey, Stitch Fix, listen. I swear I've seen Blue Apron eyeing you from the other side of the room. <laughs> yes, this will do. Okay, now that we've... I need um, someone with access to plentiful scallions. <laughs> yeah, so now that we've got two companies get married, Travis, maybe start this message from a different yeah. sort of corporate sponsor going. 
Yeah. Uh, are you getting married and want a beautiful memory to last a lifetime? Are you also huge geeks and don't want to be judged for cutting your cake with a replica of Sting? Then have... Wait, the artist? Then don't have, cut your cake with me! <laughs> That's stupid. Then we got the videographer for you. David Troth Wright will film your wedding and make it look as epic as you always knew it could be. For more info, check out yourwedding.film or contact David at dtrothright, W-R-I-G-H-T, at yahoo.com. That's Y-O-U-R-W-E-D-D-I-N-G dot film or contact D-T-R-O-T-H-W-R-I-G-H-T at yahoo.com. Spell Yahoo. What? Spell Yahoo, Travis. You Spell can't Yahoo stop. also. Y A H O O dot C O M. Thank you. For all your geek wedding videography needs. I have a message for Eli, and it's from Raina, and it goes a little something like this. To my very good big brother, Eli, surprise. I honestly don't even have anything important to say here. I had an extra hundo lying around and just thought it'd be cool to sneak this up on you. Now, Listen to one of the McElboys say these funny words. Bumfuzzle. Oh, Justin, I'm so sorry. Caddy Wampus. I'm so sorry you lost the luck of the draw here, pal. Booper Snoo. I deserved it for the Stitch Fix thing. Um, I mean, I, I lost us a sponsor. The least I can do is earn us a uh, uh, hundred bucks. That's all, I guess. Thanks, boys. Love you lots. And that's from Eli from Reyna. Mm. <laughs> you kind of messed up this attribution there. That one is. From Raina to Eli. Good there we job. go. Here's a message for Angela, and it's from Scott, who says, Dearest Angela, you are the most important person of all time, and you are taking Whoa. the world by storm. Yes. Chum- Chumbo and Numbo, my favorite Pawn Stars characters, now bow before your glowing righteousness. You are vibing and keeping it tight in ways that other humans cannot begin to fathom. Your power is endless. You are a new god. The earth trembles before you today, the day of your birth. Sweet wow. Jesus. Uh, are we supposed to be as scared of Angela as I am in this moment? Uh, I think Angela is powerful and radical. And I am, I am trembling. Yeah, I'm really glad we got to share. Oh, nope, she just stepped on my house. With her oh, huge no. foot. Yeah, she's big, powerful. It's too bad. Hey, this is John Roderick of America. I know that guy. He also made the theme song for My Brother, My Brother and Me. And you've teamed up with uh, your friend Adam and a uh, guy you also know, Ben Harrison. Hey, That's me. you're my friend. Uh, and we make a uh, war movie podcast called Friendly Fire. Now, you may be turned off by the premise right then and there. But you would be wrong. <laughs> well, it's because it's about so much more than war or war films. War movies are also a great window into filmmaking and the way our culture thinks of itself and other cultures think of themselves. So listen to Friendly Fire on MaximumFun.org every Friday or get it wherever you get podcasts. Oh, thank oh? God. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. We got a new uh, Is this box. Diamond Dave? What's going on? Oh, Jesus. His guitar got very sick. Okay. I so, want a oh. munch! Squad! I want too much! Squad! Squad. Juicy, you need to get down to Guitar Center, bud, and get that shit looked at. I gotta get this thing in the shop. I've been having to do a lot of munch squads lately, um, where the copy is the star of the show because the products haven't been as really buck wild as we need to get on a munch squad, a podcast within a podcast, profiling the latest and greatest in the quick service restaurant industry. But I want to say thank you, Fazolis. As I've said no times on the toilet, <laughs> thank you, Fazolis, for bringing the heat uh, with the new breadstick sliders. Now, if you're in the Indianapolis area, you may have seen these spring up. You're the test market for these bad boys. Um, and they're just as terrifying as they sound. You know the Fazoli's breadsticks that they used to bring you infinite of if you were seated at the table 
Um, but now don't do that anymore. I don't think um, the breadsticks, the the very, you know, the super sloppy ones that seem like eating even one is a dare kind of scenario. You know what I mean? Yeah, these little salty little missiles. Yeah. So what they've done is they've cut one of those motherfuckers in half and stuffed a bunch of pepperoni in there. Uh, they're perfect as a. It, it says here shareable snack. Now let's not think about. Let's think about that for a second. Hmm. A shareable snack doesn't seem like one thing should be a shareable snack. Like, if you come to me and you say, I've been snacking on this breadstick full of pepperoni, would you like to share it with me? Mm-hmm. I I think the answer would almost always be no. Thank you very much. Perfect is a shareable snack throughout the day. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know they don't mean that like it sounds. I know they don't mean like, oh, I'm going to put the rest of you in the Ziploc baggie. <laughs> See you at oh, 3 p.m. Yeah, sounds almost like. of a breadstick slider. Because you talk to your friend and you say you got anything going on from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Because we're going to eat these all day as these science. These are an all day's thing. The revolutionary new ways to indulge in these famous breadsticks include the revolutionary. The words mean things, you know? Uh-huh. P- pepperoni pizza breadsticks. Each order includes six of Fazoli's signature garlic breadstick halves. And then they top them with mozzarella and pepperoni, and then they bake them to a golden perfection. So what they've done, <laughs> if you can visualize this, oh, they're served with marinara for dipping. These savory, oh, yeah. cheesy, pull-apart breadsticks are perfect to share or keep all to yourself or share. <laughs> Wait, please, share. If you can visualize that, they've cut the breadsticks in half and then dump pizza on them. These are breadsticks size, right? Like these are yeah, th- yeah. very thin, very thin, non sandwich size. Yeah. Pizza. So you can get it's like one pepperoni width max, maybe. Maybe. The Italian breadstick sliders are Fazoli's signature garlic breadstick halves made into slider buns and filled with fresh premium ingredients. To create three new Italian breadstick sliders. You can't a, just keep saying that. A smashed like that. meatball breadstick slider. That's two meatballs topped with Fazoli signature marinara, sliced mozzarella, baked and finished with a garlic, uh, sorry, a basil, a basil pesto drizzle. And they don't detail why it's a smashed meatball breadstick slider, but I think we can all guess. Yeah, they just the, can't stop <laughs> fucking it up. <laughs> There's a spicy Italian breadstick slider that's sliced Genoa salami and capicol, topped with sliced mozzarella and baked and topped with pepperoni. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to laugh, but I was just <laughs> thinking that the, probably the most fucked up thing you could do as a farmer is to look at a pig right before you butcher it and tell it that it's going to be <laughs> Components are going to be used in a spicy Italian breadstick slider. It's just the meanest. It's like I can't imagine a worse yeah. indignity. The pig, the pig's like, I'm at least going to Olive Garden, right? And the farmer's like, Oh no, friend, you're not an Olive Garden pig. <laughs> oh no, you're not. You're not an Olive Garden pig. Culinary manager Rick Petralia has uh, one of the more sinister sounding Munch Quad quotes I've encountered. <laughs> We listen and pay attention to our guests' tastes and preferences in order to craft menu items <laughs> that we know they'll enjoy. <laughs> so that's like Rick's like, yeah, we've been watching you dirty yeah. sons of bitches. We got we, we got you. close. We smelled the stinkier trash hole of a mouth. We know what you put in there. <laughs> our guests love our signature unlimited breadsticks. So we set out so I guess they are still unlimited. So we set out to create more ways for them to be Enjoy. You asked for this, and now you've got it. You got it, you dirty pigs. We're excited to give our loyal fans in Indianapolis the first chance to try these delicious new menu items. They are the perfect snack for any occasion. After all, life is always better with breadsticks. What the fuck are you talking about, Rick? Rick, what are you saying? Using this word snack, is this like- on it. Take it with you, and then, you know, when when the moment comes, and you'll know when it is, snack on it. If I saw someone pull one of these out on the subway, I would jump right out of the door onto the tracks to my death. <laughs> no way. Because I don't know what that person's capable. Actually, I do know what that person's capable of. 
I just finished up lunch at Fazoli's a couple hours ago, and I got a couple more hours until I can go back to Fazoli's for dinner. I wish there was something in between that I could do to kind of tide me over. A cheesy boat across the river sticks. <laughs> that is the quick. Man, can I say something though? I right fuck, at this moment, I would yeah, I'd fuck crush these up. One of yeah, these. I would annihilate. Oh my God, them. I would annihilate them. I'm coming to Indianapolis <laughs> to eat these <laughs> these dirty dirty treats. I'm coming in. Hey, I'm announcing on my brother, my brother and me show in Indianapolis, uh, just to eat these nasty boats. <laughs> Hey, how about a Yahoo? Yeah, give it to me. Here's one that was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thanks, Graham. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user, so I'm going to call him... Uh, Ruggy. Ruggy asks, How does one become a ship captain? Mm. I don't mean a captain of a cruise ship or being oh. a captain as a career. I just mean in general. For instance, let's just say I bought a boat for, my, for myself and my family. How do you determine who is the captain? Or another example, how would Jack Sparrow have become a captain? I don't mean all the technical stuff about Davy Jones and all that because I know that part of it. I just mean that obviously he didn't go to university or college and professionally obtain a license to be captain. So how does that all work these days? Okay, first of all, Yahoo answers question asker rookie. How dare you? you undercut the Pirates of the Caribbean point I was going to make about how Jack Sparrow became a captain. How, how dare, dare you take you? Travis's joke away from him? How dare you? I was going to talk about how he made a deal with Davy Jones to raise the Black Pearl from the bottom of the ocean and thereby granting him a ship that allowed him to become a captain and you took that from me. You know, Trav, though, I think you found a way somehow. What? I'm oh. so glad we got those those uh, little peaks and valleys into the waveform. You can imagine my relief at that. You know, I've never seen a Yahoo Answers person that is so belligerent, so on guard about learning information that they are not actively <laughs> seeking out. Yeah, sure. they have built a, They've built a logical... For an impenetrable logical fortress around themselves to keep themselves from any general tidbit that they're not actively seeking out. So the the the, the scenario presented here that I was attracted to is: I buy a boat for myself and my family. How do you uh-huh. determine who's the captain? Is it the one? Let's say the three of us get together and we're out on you know the big lake, and I say I got a surprise for everybody. I bought a big boat. Am I the captain just because I'm the one that dished out the cash for it? Because I'm not convinced that I would be the best captain. No, Mm. Griffin. Captain is something that, like, everyone knows about somebody. And it's just like, like, you have to say, everybody on three point to the person who is the captain. And I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, everyone's going to point at the same person. Everyone will just inherently be like, that is the captain. Because it's not a position that's earned or granted or Mm -hmm. anything. One is just born a captain or else... Why would you be allowed to like perform weddings and stuff and throw people in the brig if, if it just meant it. nothing? You know what I mean? Like you are you are preordained to be a captain at birth. It's like when Martin Short inherited a boat and he went down to go look at it mm-hmm. and he had no idea what to do. <laughs> Yeah. He wandered the street. There's that 15 minute scene in Captain Ron of him wandering the streets of the place in Florida, I guess, and until he found a captain. And he couldn't do it himself, even though mm-hmm. he had written, read, <laughs> written and read several books about <laughs> nautical matters. Yeah, he um, knew. He, he had, was a boat scholar. He knew the information, yes. but he did. He hadn't absorbed it. It wasn't he had in no his sense marrow. of the waves. Yes. I have a theory, by the way, listener, that I'd like to put in your brain because I think about it all the time. I developed a theory upon one of my many viewings of Captain Ron that it was a ri- – you know how um, that one – uh, uh, the one Die Hard movie, Die Hard with a, with a Vengeance, was originally written as a Lethal Weapon film. You guys know this this bit of trivia, and then they repurpose it as a Die Hard film. Absolutely I have, not. I have this. Did, uh, didn't know that. I have this theory that um, Captain Ron was originally written as a National Lampoon's film, which I assume would have been titled National Lampoon's Caribbean Vacation. Uh-huh. Uh, because if you think about if you replace uh. Uh, Chevy Chase in the Martin Short role, and then you replace Captain Ron with Cousin Eddie, who for some reason has some sort of nautical knowledge. You know, we can get that in post and figure that out in the scripting process. Well, that's why they if, switched it over. They couldn't crack that nut. Mm-hmm. If you re- if you replace all that stuff, it is beat for beat what that film would have been. That imaginary film that I came up with would have been Captain Ron. I, I would swear on a sack of Bibles 
it was written as a National Lampoon movie, and no one will ever – one of the vacation films specifically. And uh, I've never found any uh, validation of this online, but if you're the screenwriter of that film, uh, please get in touch. I would like to return to a thought exercise that Travis presented just a few minutes ago before we talked about Captain Ron for a long, long time, the longest time that's ever been. I would like each of us, I'll count to three, and then each of us say the name of which of the three of us would be the captain. You are allowed to say yourself. Okay. Okay. And I want no hurt feelings. I don't want us to get our ego in this. This doesn't mean anything. It's a joke for a podcast, but when we do buy a boat, it is going to be legally binding. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Travis. Travis. Yeah, okay. 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 Cool. I no, thought that might be the case. Is it and now let me say this. Let's count to three and everybody say the reason why. Okay. So uh one, two, three. Seen because you've seen Pirates of the, of the Caribbean. Caribbean okay, movies. so okay, they were yeah. all in the same. Beard. I said beard. <laughs> oh, you Mine said beard. beard. Mine okay. was beard. <laughs> Dang. Mine was beard. A, a sea beard to catch the salt air. That is beard. fair. Yeah, that's great. We can sort of stand behind Travis and draft on him. He's going to get all that nasty salt. He's sort of like God's air purifier with that beard. Thank you. I, I do have... like that Griffin and I, well, our heads were in the same place. So I was like, Travis has probably the most nautical knowledge just through osmosis of seeing Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I have a new game. Okay. It's called Who's the Captain? And I'm going to name some casts of some films. Okay. And you tell me some ensemble casts. And you're going to tell me who, who's the captain. Okay. okay. Now, let me ask just to clarify are we talking about the actors or the characters? Oh, man, that's tough. Um, I think the actors, right? Which actor is the most captain like? Okay. Okay. This first one starts out hard and it, it only gets harder. The. Oh, fuck. This site just give me a fucking ad blocker. Fuck. Fuck you. Damn, it'd be such a shame if we weren't able to do this bit. <laughs> you think? Fuck me. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, thank Christ. The Breakfast Club. Hmm. The Breakfast okay. Club. We're talking Emilio, we're talking Molly Sheedy, uh, Anthony Michael Hall, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald. Hold on. Hold on. Ali Sheedy. Ali Sheedy. Sheedy. Stop the game. Okay. There wasn't a boat in Breakfast Club. <laughs> there doesn't have to be a boat. There doesn't have to be a boat in it. Oh, oh, who was the captain? Okay. Who, if they all bought a boat as soon as the movie ended, who's the captain? Yeah. Okay. Well, this uh, is a trick. It's a trick question, Justin. Why is that? Because I think that Emilio Estevez would be appointed captain, but by the end of the film, we find out. That like Judd Judd Nelson is the captain. See, I was gonna say Molly Ringwald. This is not the best game, though. Is the only problem. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe the first round was just a little off. Stephen Baldwin, Gabriel Byrne, Benicio del Toro, Kevin Pollock, Chas Balmenteri, and Kevin Spacey. Okay, I know who's not the captain. <sighs> yeah, I know who's the usual get suspects. Yeah. Who who do you? Th- so we're gonna say who of those people is the captain? Are you ready? Kevin Pollock. Yeah, Wait. that was where I was leaning to. See, I was thinking Benicio. Oh, I was going to give him the captainship. Okay, Look let me give your them. friends, your friend group, and see if you can figure out who the... Which one from the captain? Let me... Okay, I have one to pitch for you. Okay. Star Trek First Contact. Okay. Who's the captain? Who's the captain of that one? That's on Star toughie. Trek First... Ca- on Star Trek... Worf! <laughs> <laughs> that one's Worf. <laughs> That one is Worf. That is on that one. It's Worf. His Uh, name is already a boat thing. (laughs) (laughs) Related, Uh, folks. Thank you so much for listening to our dumb, dumb podcast. My brother, my brother, me. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, We know we've enjoyed having you. Uh, Want to mention, as always, uh, at the beginning of a month. I guess it's sort of we're getting closer to mid month now. unfathomable as that may be uh we've got a new pin in the mcelroy merch squad which you can find at mcelroymerch.com this month's new pin is a beautiful shrimp with uh angelic halo on it uh designed by elena hoyt you can find that pin along with a lot of other great merchandise uh that one's only available through june though so uh make sure you get that if you want it I uh, also want to say uh, we have the San Francisco and Phoenix shows coming up. Thanks, San Francisco. Yeah, well, in fact, I know San Francisco is sold out. I think there are still some tickets to that Phoenix show. So if you want to join us, you can go to com slash tours. 
and get your tickets there. And you can also get tickets to our other upcoming shows in Orlando and Atlanta, as well as our Adventure Zone graphic novel book tour, which is coming up in mid-July. I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. It's got all the songs on it uh, ever recorded. So Saturday Night Fever, uh, all of the other songs. And that's all on uh, Putting the Days to Bed by the Long Winters. And thanks to Max Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. Shows like the Beef and Dairy Network and International Waters and Bullseye and all the great shows at MaximumFun.org. If you want to hear other stuff we do, it's all at McElroyShows.com. Uh, y'all want that final? Yeah. You know it. It was sent in by Andy Schiff. Thanks, Andy. It's Yahoo Answers user question mark. So I'll call him. Uh, Bern- uh, Bernarf asks... Is the ASS all that matters these days? It's <laughs> 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 <is> just <laughs> and I vote yes. I'm Travis McRoy, and the research just isn't in yet. Uh, my name is Griffin McElroy, and I'm not... This is gross. I'm not going to joke about that. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. We've all made mistakes in book club, right? You drink a little too much, you don't actually read the book, and if you're under the bubble in Fairhaven, your individual will get subsumed by the collective. Hey, maybe I just let him go and whip us up some guac. We do not require guac. We require only nutrients and expansion. You will become book club. You will eat, pray, and love with us. Join Book Club. Bubble, the sci-fi comedy from MaximumFun.org. Just open your podcast app and search for Bubble.